Welcome to the Amar Alpha Clone fittings video. So this video is for Alpha Clones that want to do some PVP and are curious of what type of fits might work for PVP depending on what they're doing. Now it's important to know that Alpha Clones are limited so it's going to be hard to compete against Omega Clones. Luckily you don't have to always op compete against Omega Clones and there are even some cases where you can beat Omega Clones with a good PvP fit, especially if he's not fit very well. So, before we get started, I'm using a max skilled Amar Alpha Clone character here in Eve Fitting Tool. Now, Eve Fitting Tool hasn't been updated in a long time, so I recommend that you put these fits in Pypha, um, that's the Python Fitting Assistant or something like that. It's updated more often and probably a better thing for Alpha Clones and new Eve players to learn on. I've just learned on EFT, so I stick with it for now, although I will be switching to Pypha soon. The main reason I use it is because it's I know how to create uh, characters very easily that can plug into here based on what I see in the patch notes for what the characters will be able to do. So this is an Amar Alpha clone. The download link for this will be in the article. The link to the article is in the description. If you want to go download this character and play with it in EFT, then it's right there. You can go get it. I'm not sure if that translates to Pypha. I don't know. But these are all PVP fittings, and they'll all be in the article with the fittings and everything else too, so I recommend you go check that out. We're going to get started with frigates, and we're going to work our way through the frigates and up to cruisers. Now, because Amar uses lasers, there's <clears throat> almost always some kind of cap problem, capacitor problem. Capacitor is a real problem on all races really it's something that you have to manage and if your guns are using a lot of capacitor which lasers do then you have to be extra careful about your capacitor so that's going to be a theme throughout all these fits is that capacitor is a little bit of an issue especially if you're running any kind of armor repair and since you are a mar you're going to be running armor repair most of the time it's your skills for armor are going to be better than your skills for shield Therefore, it's better to go with armor if you're an Amar Alpha clone. Now, if you are a Mimitar or a Kaldari Alpha clone, then shields start to look better. So, I've got all my AARs, Ancillary Armor Repairs, overloaded. You overload them all the time, even if you just need one rep, overload it because when you're overloading, you get a 15% bonus to duration, the time, but also a 10% bonus to the amount. So that's the important one right there, is that you get a 10% bonus to the amount. And since you can overload it for so long, pretty much forever, because it's not going to last 12 minutes, you'll have to reload it. <clears throat> it only lasts about a minute. What that means is that you might as well get that extra 10% on every single rep. It makes no sense not to, unless you're like at a safe spot and you're just repping up after a fight or something like that. Then maybe not, because it's not, uh, it's not pressing and you're not having to get every ounce of efficiency out of it. So what you're going to notice here is that my capacitor is not stable. 48 seconds. This is a Tormentor Scram Kite. Now let me explain to you what a Scram Kite is before we go any further. Um, in EVE Online there are multiple types of combat ships. There are brawlers. A brawler is just gets up in your face and starts going at it. It's infighting you know, for martial artists. But um, gets real close and fights up close, orbits tight, stays really close to you, tries to um, do as much damage from a close range as possible. That's a brawler. Brawlers are typically tanky and they're typically high DPS, high damage output. A kiter, in the traditional sense, is a long kite, someone who stays out beyond web range, but beyond the overheated web range of 13k, and typically out around 15 to 20 kilometers from your ship orbiting at 15 to 20 sometimes using a keypad or sometimes running in a straight line depending on the tactic but staying more than 13k from the target and applying DPS from that range a scram kite is kind of an in-between between the the brawler and the kite a scram kite goes in at less than 10k less than 9k usually which is the typical scram range for a tech 2 warp scrambler less than 9k but usually more than 4 or 5k 
So there's that sweet spot of roughly five to eight kilometers, and usually more like five to seven kilometers, where the scram kites live. And the reason for this is because most brawlers, and let me see if I can bring one up for you. Like here's a brawling tormentor we're about to look at in a second. You can see his range is limited. So his optimal range, 3K, plus his fall off, 1.2K, is, is 4.2. Now, in EVE Online, optimal plus fall off is 50% of the damage. So right now you can see my turret DPS is 101, almost 102, which we'll say 102. At 4.2K, my theoretical, what I should be doing is going to be 50% of that number. So I'll be doing 51 DPS at 4.2K, whereas at 3K or below 3K, so long as I'm tracking well, at below 3 kilometers, I'm going to be doing the full 100 DPS. So you can see how important just 1.2 kilometers of distance is to the amount of damage this ship can do to another ship. So in a fight with this ship versus this ship, this ship is going to win, right? Because he's faster, more speed, better agility, right? Faster, more agility, and since he can control the range of the fight, this ship is going to be able to stay out at about five, six, seven kilometers, apply full damage from his guns because he's got beam lasers instead of pulses, which means that out here at this range, he's going to be doing his full turret DPS and full drone DPS. So he'll be doing 156 DPS, whereas this guy's only going to be doing about, I don't know, 70, 80 DPS, right? Maybe less than that, maybe even like 50, 60 DPS, right? From about six to seven kilometers. So that's how a scram kite works, which is why I'm not so worried about the capacitor on this ship, because the majority of the fight, you're not going to have to be running that. You're not going to have to run it nonstop. You're just going to pulse it, turn it on for a, a cycle or two, and then turn it off. At which point you go back to cap stable and you're able to regen a little bit. Another important note is that when you are in a, a PvP fight, especially in frigates, you want to overload from the beginning. Now, if you're curious about overloading and want to learn more about that, I made a video a while back, it's one of my most popular videos called Overloading uh, Guide or EVE Online Overloading Guide, something like that. You can search my websites for it. I might even put a link here for it. <clears throat> but it, it talks to you about the theory of overloading and why it's so important to overload from the beginning of a fight instead of waiting until the end when you've already lost to start overloading. Do it from the beginning. Get that 179 DPS. You've got a minute 41 at worst with max skills, and that I believe is with... Um, Thermodynamics 3. Yeah, Thermodynamics 3 is the max you can train on an Alpha Clone. So <clears throat> that's pretty good. That's more, most frigate fights last less than a minute. Okay? So that means that you should be doing this the entire time. This setup right here is very, very good, I think. I think it's really nice. You've got a fleeting web here. And the reason for that is because it's a little bit better than the X5, it costs more. Um, this thing says it costs, well, I don't think that's accurate. Maybe that's accurate. I thought that they were closer to a million -esque. But either way, this one's better than the X5. You've got an afterburner. This is the best named afterburner. So it's going to give you the most speed But before you get to either a faction. Um, you're an alpha clone, so you don't want faction. You can't fit tech two. So this is the best you're going to do. The faint scram is pretty good. It's the best named. And then for our rigs, we got collision. Um, that's more DPS, more damage per shot. The reason I did that is for to conserve cap. Typically, you would go with the burst if cap wasn't an issue, because more shots means more rolls of the dice in the tracking equation, where you have a set amount of odds of hitting the target. You know, maybe it's nine times out of ten, eight times out of ten that you're going to hit the target. And it makes sense if you have the option of either doing more damage for every time you hit versus having more chances at hitting. It's better to have more chances at a hit than it is to have more damage. That's all the math in the deal. But <clears throat> you don't really have to understand that. Just go with the collision. The polycarbon is to give you a little bit more speed so you can better dictate range by controlling range. This whole ship's set up. The whole idea behind this ship is controlling range. That's the most important thing. 
control range and be able to do DPS out at a range where your opponent can't. So um, to end this ship, to kind of the last thing to talk about here is when you're thinking about this ship, you know, kind of think of the schoolyard bully with his hand on the head of the kid and the little kid throwing punches, but none of the punches are actually hitting the bully. That's basically what this ship is, is you're able to keep your opponent too far for him to do any damage to you. All right, so let's close that. Next up is this brawler you looked at. And now this ship is not all that good. The reason I'm showing you this is to set up the next one and also because I think that there is some there are some situations where this will, this will work. Not in faction warfare. Now that previous fit right there, the alf, the scram kite, that's perfect for the faction warfare, no vice, and small sites. All right. This one I would not go in there because there's too many scram scram kites in faction warfare. However, if you were able to get a one versus one with some with another frigate, this is not a bad choice. If you were able to go to Nullsec and maybe try some stuff. This is not a bad choice. The good thing about this ship is the armor hit points. That's pretty good for a frigate, 6k. But again, I'm not thrilled. The DPS output is not all that great, even overloaded. It's not as good as the other one. Um, I just don't really like it. And I may not even include that in the actual fits. So now no, I'm actually not. The Punisher does what that ship does a lot better. So the Punisher is the old school Amar frigate. It used to be the king of the Amar frigates before the Tormentor. The Tormentor's kind of taken over now because it's more flexible and it works better in today's PvP environment. But back in the day when I first started, the Punisher was well known for having a lot of hit points. And that's what it has. It's got 10,000 hit points. For a frigate, that's incredible. There's a lot of cruisers that are not much more than 10,000 hit points. So this is almost cruiser level hit points on a frigate, right? So the reason it has those hit points are because of first the bonuses. It gets a 4% per level to armor resist. You're level four at max skills, uh, level four Amar frigate. So you've got that nice 16% bonus to your armor resist. Then we throw in a 400 millimeter plate, which is a big plate for a frigate to fit. It's um, more commonly seen on destroyers, the 400 millimeter, but it does go on some frigates. You've got two of these adaptive nanoplates. The reason I use those, they're Tech 2, which is nice, um, and because of your CPU. CPU is very limited on this ship. Otherwise, I could maybe go with a energized prototype. Prototype energized right there. Um, I mean, if we look at the differences between the two, you can see, wow, okay. That's something I didn't even know. I just learned. The Tech 2, the Tech 2 uh, Adaptive Nano is better than the, the Tech 1 named. That is surprising. And it takes no CPU, so I might have to change a few of these fits further down the line. Um, so, we've got Trimark pumps for the rigs. Those increase your overall armor hit points. And then you've got beam lasers here. And I'm not so sure about whether or not beam lasers are the right choice. And I think we're going to go ahead and change that. What I was thinking when I put those on is I was thinking that if you were, if you were in a faction warfare with this, it's got such a great tank that it could work as a bait ship. So if you've got some friends that you're flying with, you put this in a site and you let them come to you and it, you could actually then if you're going to be in the site get rid of the heat sink and put another armor mod on there so that you have even more hit points let them come in get the scram on them and hold them down for the rest of your friends to come blob I mean that's the way Eve works um, you hear a lot of people myself included who hate blobbers but it's the way Eve works and I'd be doing you wrong if I didn't tell you that that's just a way to get kills so you bait with something you get to tackle, then you bring in your little gang of ships and you kill the target. Um, so there's not much more here. I, I want to change out these guns because I, I don't like them. Um, hold on. Okay, these are pulse. That confused me that it said beam. All right, good. I thought I had made a mistake and fit beam lasers, which would have been a mistake. 124 DPS, no drones. That's why its DPS isn't all that good. It's got four guns, so it doesn't overload as well as a ship with three guns or two guns. 
the more modules you have overloading, the lower the overload time. So a minute and a half of overload, 143 DPS. Your DPS or your speed are not going to be really the cool parts about this ship. The cool part about this ship is the number of hit points. That's all. Is it effective as a solo ship? It depends on the situation. Um, overall, would I want to fly this as my primary solo ship? No. So I would really relegate it more to a bait ship. All right, so the Executioner. The Executioner is the small fast frigate for Amar. And something I've been noticing more and more lately in EVE is because there's so many scram kites, there's a lot of situations where you're better off being small and fast than you are being very tanky or very high DPS output. So this ship is a nice brawler. I think you could use it in Faction Warfare or you could use it in um, Nullsec. I made a variation of it that's just pure speed. Same fit except no armor repair. And it goes with more speed and more DPS output. I'm not really sure if, uh, if it's viable but it looks kind of cool to me like if you can take on a target with this ship here this one then you can probably you know as long as the target doesn't have drones you have a good chance at winning so that's kind of interesting let's minimize that this one is more of your traditional type small brawler and the little bit of tank you have is relatively cap stable here two minutes because you've got this Nas. Nosferatu suck energy from your opponent, which you know, potentially could lower his capacitor and make it harder for him to operate his ship. So by having that, you're able to brawl and have some fun with them. This is my favorite brawler, I think, for the Amar frigates. Now for the Amar destroyer, the Dragoon. I did not do the Coercer. Coercer's got some potential. The thing I have, the thing I don't like about the Courser, it's only got two mid slots when I think it really should have three. Let me open that up. Not that. You can see here there's only two mid slots. Here's an old fit I had. It doesn't even work for the MR Alpha clones. But the good part about it is it has so many guns, and lasers are so flexible that. There's some interesting things you can do with it. Like this one's without a point. You know, there's some interesting things you can do with lasers, and it's got a 10 in where you have a lot of range flexibility. Let me talk about that for a second. So let's say that you are in a fight with let's bring this one back up with a scram kite. If you carry two different types of ammo, the good thing about lasers is they can change ammo instantly. All the other races, every other turret type, missile type, there's a reload time. Typically 10 seconds depending on what it is. There's a couple exceptions to that. So everybody else has a reload time. You don't. So let's say you carried standard and now you can hit that ship that's scram kiting you. And this ship it's very unlikely anyone to be able to scram kite you because you're faster. I'm going to make a little change here actually. If it's as cheap as this thing says, then you might as well go with the fleeting for this to make sure that you're faster. Alright, so the Dragoon is an interesting destroyer. It seems kind of confused to me, like there's no set way that it wants to fight. Um, it's not like the Algos where it's just a, a really great drone fighter. It's a mixture of a cap warfare ship and a drone ship, and so it's kind of, it was hard for me to find a good fitting for this, and I still don't know that I really did find a good fitting for it. It's a fitting that works. You've got drones. You can do five at any time. I chose Hobgoblins, Hornets, and Warriors. Uh, because of the speed bonus you get on this ship, you probably don't need the Warriors. Because the Warriors are going to go so fast with that speed bonus. You can see almost 7,000. And that's really a little bit that's a lot faster than you'll ever need them to go so I think you'd be better off with acolytes and then the acolytes go 6,003 that's more than enough there's very few ships in this game you'll see go faster than 4,000 maybe 5,000 for some interceptors but that's, that's rare 
to see something go above 5,000 meters a second. So what I did here is I focused on maximizing your ability to newt. I really wish there was another medium slot here so I could get some help with capacitor. You know, small cap booster would do wonders. If they just added a medium slot to this and took away a low, this ship would be much, much better, far better. Um, but they didn't, so we've got two newts. One's a Tech 2, one's a named. That's for fitting reasons, and we got a Nas. So if you find yourself in a problem with cap, the Nas can help you out. But um, you can see here, they don't get the Nas and newt don't get bonuses to their amounts. They get bonuses to their range. So what that makes me want to do with this ship is it makes me want to turn it into a scram kite. However, I don't know if it really works as a scram kite. And you know what? We're going to try this. So live fitting example. I'm going to turn this into a scram kite. For a scram kite, we need beams. Biggest beams possible if you can. We can see that's way beyond what's possible. So we're going to go down to these beams or longer range. Every race has two classes of turret, a short range and a long range. It's pulses and beams, um, blasters and rails, and then auto cannons and artillery for all the different races. Missiles are a whole different ball game. But all right, so let's turn this into a scram kite. To do that, we're going to use the beam lasers. All right then I want to maximize my speed. So let's see if I can get that faster. Is that faster 570? No, it's not. But it's better on capacitor. All right, so we've got that. We want to try to sit around 7K. So let's see what else we can do here. We can newt at that range very easily. We've got the drone damage amplifier. What I think I'm going to do is I'm going to try to increase the amount of speed. And the reason that this can still work as a scram kite is because if you've got your opponent cap dead, then there's really uh, there's no way he can even try to maintain range with you. He's going to struggle to keep you webbed. He's going to struggle to keep his afterburner on. So if he's capped dead, he really can't even try. So even this relatively slow speed here is going to be enough. All right, so we've got that. What else can we do? How about some more? We can go with more speed, or we can go with more capacitor, or we could go with more. I think more speed is the way to go. So let's do that. especially now that I got rid of the armor. Oh, we could also go with a uh, whole tank. That's a good idea. All right, so let's do that. How about, um, let's see what this does. That's not enough to really be interesting. Although, eh, maybe we'll just do one. Come over here and let's get a bulkhead. You can see what that does to our effective hit points. It's nice. All right, and then up here, we've got to find things for this, I think. Let's just do it this way. All right, that takes us up to 7,000. I don't have enough CPU to fit another drone damage amplifier, which would be nice to boost that drone damage. And I don't see any way, realistically, I could drop. Well, let's actually let's give it a shot. Let's see if we can get another one of those in there. So I'm going down to uh, easier to fit modules. All right, so now we've got 20. We need 30. Anything else we can do? We could drop these to named, but you can see that for the newt, it doesn't change the CPU. For the NAS, we could go down and save three, but that's not going to do it for us. We could change the damage control, and that would do it. So let's do that. But then that's going to hurt our structure tank. So we're 7,000 now. We're giving up, so I don't think that's worth it. And it doesn't even solve our problem. Yeah, it does. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so we're not even going to worry about that then. Let's go undo these changes I made. I think the Tech 2 here is better because you get a little bit more range, more flexibility, you're less likely to lose point. And with this, you want your capacitor to be as good as it possibly can be in this ship. You don't have to run all these nozzles and newts the entire time. Um, then finally, I think we need to do one overdrive and one nano. Well, I can't do a nano, so let's do two overdrives. The reason I can't do a nano here is because I'm doing some structure tanking um, and that the nanos reduce your structure hit points. So I think that would be the scram kite for the Dragoon. You're up to 700, which is still terrible. 7, which is still terrible for, you know, as far as when you're fighting against frigates. But with, with all three of these running, you're going to cap dead a frigate really fast. And let me give you an example of that. So that's not the best one because he has a Nas, so it's not going to be an accurate example. So with this, you can see his capacitor is going to last 11 or 24 seconds. Now that's assuming that he starts with a full capacitor. Almost no fight in EVE Online starts with a full capacitor. So roughly this guy is going to have 20 seconds and then all of a sudden he's going to be sitting there with those stats. No damage output, only moving at 384, which compared to this is no problem for this guy to maintain range. Use a keypad. He's going to use a keypad of about 6K, maybe 6.5K. I'd say 6.5. So 6,500 meters keypad for this ship. And against this ship, you win. Let's bring up that Tormentor. Against this ship, you win also because what it would do is it would leave this ship like this. So it's the same thing. I'm sorry this, this video is going on a little bit long, but I think it's worth it just to get all this information out there. So his firepower is only his drones now, 29 DPS, which is nothing. And then his guns are turned off. He has no way of regenerating cap. He has no NAS. He has no cap booster. So he has no way to apply good damage to you. He has no way to tank you anymore. And he has no way to control range because now you're faster than him. All right, so this is a viable fit we just made. It's probably better than the fit that I started with. Which is why it's, it's good to spend some time in EFT or PIFA and just play with these things. Just try to learn from doing these little matchups in your head. And if you have a fight where you lose a fight, then go to a place like Z Killboard, pull up that pilot's uh, losses, get their fit, put it into PIFA or EFT, and then have little imaginary fights with it where you take and you say, well, how could I beat him? What, what could I do to, to my ship? Or what ship could I fly that would counter that? And whether or not you ever get the chance at that rematch or not, just figuring out those problems and working through them, you're going to be able to learn more about the game and understand more about the way the game works. So let me turn this stuff back on. Did I remove the... Yeah. Just doing this because I take pictures of all this stuff for the article. So I need it all to look correct. All right, so that's a good fit there. I like that. This one, I don't like anymore. It's, it's not as good as the other one, so I'm going to get rid of it. Finally, we have two fits that I don't think you'll be using as often. The reason for that is because of cost. <coughs> so the Mauler is, a Mar, is an Amar Tech 1 cruiser, and the Mauler is good because it's really, really tanky. So it's got a 4%, just like the Punisher. This is kind of a trait that goes through all of Amar ships. In every class, just about, there's a really tanky version. And, you know, the frigates, the cruisers, battle cruisers, battleships. 4% to armor resist. So what I did is I basically just gave it a lot of hit points. 35,000, which is high for a cruiser. It's a little bit low for a battle cruiser. So... As far as hit points go, you're very baity. You can sit there and you can tackle things and hold things down while the fleet comes. Um, you can see I have this module here that we were talking about at the beginning of the video. We're going to go ahead and get rid of that and see what it does. 35,200, and that's going to change to 35,000. 
35,300. Very marginal change, but it's worth it because now we have more CPU to play with and there's a lot of other things we might be able to do with this. So try marks again for armor hit points, 1600 millimeter plate, give you lots of hit points, 35,000. 35,000 means that you're going to be able to stay on the, the, in the fight for quite a while giving you plenty of time to maybe kill frigates. One piece of advice I would give you is if you're using this ship as an anti-frigate ship, go to your guns and switch out to smalls and use small guns on this ship despite the, the bonus. Because if you use smalls and a scram and a web on this ship, you're going to be able to really kill frigs, uh, frigates really easily. So I think that's an interesting ship. It's very baity. It's a good bait ship. It's maybe a good anti-frig ship if you fit uh, small frigate size guns on it instead of cruiser size. <coughs> and then the problem with that ship, we'll just bring it back up. My throat's getting really dry. That's why I'm coughing so much. The Mauler is good except 52 million ISK. For most Alpha clones, that's going to be a little bit too much to PvP in. I understand that, but it's just something to consider. The Slicer is also expensive for an Alpha clone. And... It's uh, still an interesting ship, so it's harder to fly. This is a harder to fly ship than you're likely to see for most, most beginners. The reason for it is because it's a traditional kite, <coughs> which means that it stays out at as far of a range as it really can, and um, which means roughly you would be orbiting, you'd set your orbit at about 17 kilometers is what I would set it at. You're pretty agile, you're pretty fast, 3,300, which means against all those ships we just saw, if you were in the site before them in Faction Warfare, or if you encountered them in Nullsec and could come in and spiral in on them, then you could basically stay far, far away from any damage they could do to you, and then just wear them down with your little 100 DPS. Now, you only have two guns, so you would always split those with a slot in between to allow for better overloading. You can see that here. When they're together, it's 2 minutes 31. When they're apart, it's about, what, 2.45, 2.48. So what that does is it, it makes it so you can overload nonstop, basically. Um, in most fights, you'll overload nonstop. 140 DPS. Uh, you can see I had to do a lot for capacitor here because as a beginning pilot, you don't have to be fighting with your capacitor as much. More experienced pilots can get away with less cap stability. Um, but it's, it's never fun to do in a really prolonged fight. So this is a ship that would work as a kiting frigate. If you want to try it, you go into the site, make sure you're in a small or a novice before anyone else gets there, and sit about 20k, I would say, 15 to 20k off the beacon, and then as soon as they get in, start your orbit at about 17 kilometers and just orbit them and apply DPS. You've got a 19k optimal here and you can apply pretty good DPS which is certainly enough to break most frigates um, in about a minute, minute and a half and I think it's an interesting fit, it's an interesting fitting for Amar Alpha clones that want to play at the higher end. If I was a, a solo Amar Alpha clone, which I will be probably not Amar Alpha clone, I'll probably when I do my Alpha clone PvP videos I'm leaning towards either Mimitar or Galante um, but this ship is kind of nice. What I would do, you know, compared to these, I would much rather solo in two of these, or maybe even three, than one of these. And one last tip before I end this video is when you're flying these ships, always platinum insure your ships. Always use platinum insurance. Even if for this ship it's not going to be the best deal, um, you're not going to get back the full price. But for something like a Mauler or even one of the Tech 1 frigates, you're going to get back a large percentage of the price. And the way I tell people to PvP in EVE Online is whenever you buy a ship, plan that you're going to lose that ship. Because if you're doing it right, that ship will die. EVE Online is not a game of, I'm going to buy this ship and it's going to last me the rest of my EVE career. It's a game of, I'm going to buy this ship and if I have a good night, I'm going to lose it tonight, but I'm going to kill a lot before I do. Right, So that's the way you got to think in your head. It's not so much about stay alive, stay alive, stay alive. Um, you need to be in a place where you are okay with dying. That loss is not going to hurt you. It's not going to ruin your day. It's not going to ruin your week to where you have to go mine or mission or, or whatever. 
it means that you can get out there and not feel as much pain and get more experience quicker. And Platinum Insurance helps with that. It recoups even just a little bit of that cost. Even on frigates, it recoups like the cost of the whole, which is not much, but it's like 500,000, 300,000 is, something like that. But it still helps. So even when I'm flying Tech 1 frigates, I Platinum Insure them for the extra 200,000 is just to have good habits, right? Um, not that I actually need that ISK, but it's just a good habit to have. Every time you get a ship, Platinum Insure it. Yes, there will be times when you forget about a ship and your insurance expires and you wasted that money, but that's going to be the, the exception. If you're doing it right, most ships will never expire before you lose them. Unless you're talking like as an Omega clone, you've got a missioning ship that you'll probably never lose or hopefully never lose um, or something like that. But that's, the, that's it for today's video. Those are the MR Alpha clones. You can get the fittings, the exports. You can just copy them and import them into EVE Online or PIFA or EFT. You can get all those at EVE Pro Guides, the article that's listed in the description.